Chamanandu is big. Yeah? Yeah. But who is looking huge? So this is Chamanandu. Chama. Chamanandu is big. Yeah? Yeah. But who is looking huge? Chamanandu and Patoka. This is Chamanandu. Chamanandu? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Chama. Chamanandu. So, but how do you feel when you're standing with Chaminandu nearby? Are you feeling comfortable or you are like, you are yeah. shivering just because he's a big... You can see no. Chaminandu is very tall and you, you are looking like... Uh, no, I'm very free. You are very free? Yeah, very free because I've kept this many years. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's wonderful. You are in paradise. Yeah. New Jerusalem. Hi, this is Animal Matters. Our opening video today is of elephant orphan Chemilandu. In an important step towards her full return to the wild, we're excited about some recent interactions going on between her and a wild male. Chemilandu was first brought to our elephant orphanage project at age one and a half because of poaching. Now at age 11, she's become the matriarch of her new herd at our Kafui release facility in Zambia. Well, 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 we just learned that she's had some potentially life-changing encounters with a wild bull outside their enclosure. I won't give you the play-by-play, -play, but we do have the play-by-play. -play. There was a bit of get-to-know-you time, rest assured, and after three days of canoodling, the bull strutted back off to the wild. Come January, we'll know if Shamalandu goes back into her 15-week estrus cycle, or if we expect that she might be expecting. Did you know that elephants have a 22-month gestation period before giving birth? You can bet we'll be watching, and you will be the first to know. From the plains of Africa to the U.S. Rocky Mountains, one of the ways we have an impact on the world is through filmmaking, and we've been doing just that. Last night, Sonic C took home two Emmys, Outstanding Nature Documentary and Outstanding Music and Sound. This provocative 60-minute documentary was produced in partnership with NRDC and Imaginary Forces, and it brings awareness to all of us on the devastating impact of industrial and military ocean noise on whales and other marine life. If you missed it on the Discovery Channel, we'll give you a Vimeo code below, just so you can see the whole film yourself. It's Rachel McAdams' voice. Sting shows up. You should watch it. Not stopping there though, we're also freshly back from the Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival in Wyoming just last week, where, we, where Sonic C won Best Science in Nature Film. What a crazy honor to be there, to share both this and IFA's Hunt Watch film, which was a finalist in the Impact category. We created that category just a few years ago to applaud films that are having a true impact on the world. Last week's festival coincided with the official Cat Conservation Summit too where our experts join even more experts in presenting films, research, partnerships, and innovative approaches in protecting imperiled big cat species around the world. Moving on, sharing is caring. Perhaps that's why a bunch of US Congress members use the acronym SHARE to distract people from their legislation's true intentions. The bill, officially the Sportsman's Heritage and Recreational Enhancement Act, only shares with so-called sportsmen the unfettered access to kill animals in the wilds of the U.S. The SHARE Act would, and bear with me through this egregious hack job of environmental protections, allow trapping on federally managed land wherever hunting is allowed, mandate that a huge portion of public lands be open to hunting without regard for the impact on sensitive wildlife populations, withdraw endangered species protection from gray wolves in Wyoming and the Great Lakes states, and allow a group of bee hunters to import the polar bears they killed right after the administration announced it would soon protect the species under the ESA. Phew. Animal lovers and conservationists alike would be, should be appalled at this proposal. Make sure you tell your U.S. representative that federal lands belong to all of us and urge him or her to oppose H.R. 3668. 
And in a new segment, I'm calling From Depression to Hopefulness, we check in on, our, on America's friendly neighbors to the north. The annual grizzly bear hunt began ironically in the Peace Re River region of British Columbia. In addition to meat, these majestic bears are hunted so people can harvest their parts, like their hide, to make tacky rugs. And what I can only imagine are really itchy throws and blankets. But that's the depressing part. And now, the BC government has announced it will ban the senseless hunting effective December 2017. Want to know why? You! Well, maybe not you specifically, but the Canadian version of you. Our amazing grizzly bear loving supporters helped make this happen. We collectively told the government that even one grizzly bear hunted as a trophy is too many. And they listened. So the next time you see an important action on social media or in your email, and it seems like your signature can't possibly count, remember the grizzlies. Bear paws belong on bear arms. And we need to use our paws to make sure the government knows it. Lastly, we end this report with some family reunions. Not those awkward family reunions with distant family members and names you can't remember. We're talking about the best type of reunions, those involving our four-legged friends. Two weeks ago, we reported on IFA's disaster response efforts in the U.S. Virgin Islands in the wake of Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Our team is on the ground on the island of St. John, where they met Ryan Moore, the manager of St. John's Animal Care Center who bravely decided to stay behind and care for dozens of animals at the shelter. Many of these animals were owned by people who either had immediately evacuated and couldn't take their pets, or who were in the States visiting family when the storms hit. And they haven't been able to get back. Well, just this week, we worked with our peers to welcome a plane full of cats and dogs that landed in New Hampshire. One by one, the crates were unloaded and brought to the group of anxious pet owners eager to identify their furry family members. Moments of sheer happiness followed as owners greeted their beloved pets. Tears of joy were shed, tails wagged with excitement, warm hugs and slobbery kisses exchanged. In total, 27 cats and dogs were reunited with their owners. All I can say is, reunited and it feels so good. Well, that's our report for this week. We leave you with more heartwarming moments from Tuesday's Furry Family Reunion. Animal Matters airs live every Friday afternoon, Eastern Time. For updates, check out ifa.org and follow us on Twitter at Action for IFA. Remember, animals matter to people on the planet. Join us in being part of the solution. Shadow! 